really outdid herself this morning. Breakfast was absolutely delicious. I think those are the best biscuits I've ever had. Yeah, I could have eaten a dozen of them. Split it with you. I'll get the better. We're getting low on feed. Thought I'd run into town tomorrow and pick some up. We're out already? It's the end of the month, Joe. Where's the time gone? Rob's birthday is just in a few weeks. I haven't even thought about what kind of present to get him. And what does he like? All kinds of things. Trains, puppets, storybooks. But I really wanted to do something different this year. Well, maybe you could make him something. What's his favorite story? Well, he really likes Little Red Riding Hood. But I don't know what I could make out of that. Noah's Ark is one of his favorites. I must have read it to him a million times. Well, there you go. Build him Noah's Ark. Build it? Sure, you can make him a little toy model, animals and all. I wouldn't know where to start. Well, I could help you. Would you? I'd really appreciate that. Woodworking is definitely not my strong suit. No problem. Go on. Take it. Are you sure? Sure. Hey, Dan, did you hear that snoring? <laughs> not gonna not. Barely hear the reverend. <laughs> Listen, the guys and I, we're gonna play some ball. Do you wanna join us? I can't. Still haven't finished my arithmetic. Well, I heard that Franz is giving us a new science project tomorrow. Another one? Yeah. I haven't finished the last one yet. He said he's gonna break us up into pairs. Who knows, maybe we could even work together. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Thank you, Mrs. Bear. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rick. Excuse us, please, Reverend. Mimi, that was rude. You have to see this, Joe. What? Maybe. Who's she talking to? Edward Trenton. He went to Harvard with Laurie. He's an attorney at a very prestigious law firm in Boston. Well, what is he doing in Concord? He's here for the week on business. I think he's quite taken with her. <laughs> is she blushing? <laughs> Come on. That was a, a beautiful hymn you sang in church today. I hope you don't mind my saying, but you have the voice of an angel. I'd like you to meet my other sister, Joe Bear. How do you do? It's very nice to meet you. Laura's told me so much about you all. Really? And just what have you told him? Just how lucky I am to have married into a family full of such beautiful women. <laughs> yes, indeed, Laurie. You are a lucky man. We'll study the animal and then write a five-page report about it. Any animal is fine, mammal, bird, amphibian, as long as everyone chooses a different one. Can we do fish? Fish are fine, Tommy. How about trout? <laughs> trout are fine as well. Now, as you'll soon find out, animals of different species often work together to ensure their protection and safety. So, in keeping with this, I've decided that you will do this assignment in groups of two. Franz, can I be with Dan, please? We can do horses. Yeah. Can I work with Tommy? 
And then you want to work with me? So I can do all the work? Class. I don't think so. Class. She always works Class. with you. Check about that kind of stuff. Settle down. To avoid this precise scenario, I've taken the liberty of choosing your partners for you. Tommy, you'll work with Emil. Nat, you and Nan will work together. Dan, you'll work with Bess. Peter, you and David will work together. All right, we got plenty of wood. Now you just gotta decide what you want it to look like. Well, there's a description of it right here. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. The door of the ark shalt thou sit in the side thereof. Like a drawbridge. A drawbridge? Yeah, and then there'll be a little house on top. You know what I mean. Here, let me show you. See, drawing's not your strong suit either. Very funny. There. Like that. You know, the little house that Noah and his family lived in. Oh, you mean the cabin? Yeah. Well, the cabin looks all right, but the bow needs a little work. You gotta angle it more or else she's gonna sink. There. That looks good. Let's get started. Well, now we need to figure out how big you want it to be. Well, it's probably not going to be as big as the real one. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Uh, 300 cubits, it says in here. So, cubit was... Easy inside of your arm. From here? there. So one cubit? What? The arc for Rob, about one cubit. Oh, yeah. Sure. <clears throat> All right. I better get started measuring some wood. Giraffe, that might be interesting. Mm, yeah, they're, they're pretty and all. They don't really do anything. I want something that eats the giraffe. How about a lion? A lion? Yeah, Franz, can we do a lion? Sorry, Nat, Tommy and Emil have already chosen that one. Mm. But I want something that eats other animals. All right, how about hyenas? Yeah, but hyenas don't do anything. They just wait around for other animals to do the killing. Well, keep looking. Hey, how about that? An alligator. Yeah, they kill things. Penguins? Yes, penguins are so cute. But whatever you want. Good. We should divide up the work. You can study their environment, diet, and social habit. And what are you going to do? I'm going to study nesting. Nesting? Yeah, you know, how they build their homes, feed their cute tiny little babies. Oh, so I have to do three things and you only have to do one. Well, that sounds real fair. I'll have you know that the study of nesting is much more complicated than what you're doing. Yeah, sure it is. It is. Ah, you're so rude. Gosh, you don't do anything right. Those penguins. Yeah, we are. I think we'll need more potatoes, Asia. Oh, oh well, I better get a few more. You know how these kids like my potatoes. <laughs> Amy! Meg! What are you doing here? Oh, nothing. We just stopped by to say hello. What's the matter with you two? What's going on? Go on, tell her. Edward sent Meg a note. A note? He asked Lori permission to send her one. <laughs> what did it say? Oh, nothing really. Nothing. It is the most romantic letter I've ever read. He does have lovely penmanship, don't you think? He wants to court her. Well, are you going to accept? Of course she is. Well, I haven't decided yet. I need to think about it. Meg, 
What's there to think about? He's very handsome. He's society. And he's disgustingly rich. Amy. And he's a gentleman. He seems very nice. Well, it all just seems a bit sudden to me. Joe, this opportunity may not present itself again. Meg just can't throw it away. Well, Amy, we can't pressure her either. This is a big step for Meg. When she's ready, she'll make the right decision. I think I'd like to accept his invitation. Well, then good. That, that, that's good. You're supposed to help me set the table, Bess. I am. I'm making the napkins look pretty. See? It's a swan. It is? Yes, it is. That yeah, well, one looks more like a turkey. <sighs> it says here that other animals eat baby alligators. So the mothers will sometimes carry their babies in their mouths. That doesn't sound very safe. What if she accidentally swallowed? Oh, hey, look at this. It says that alligators court by nudging and shoving each other. <sighs> Stop it! Recording season begins with splashing, head slaps, and roaring bellows. I'm not gonna do it right. Don't do it at all, Dan. You know, I think Dan and Beth should have been alligators. Yeah, right. You happy now? It's a decoration. It doesn't go on the plate. Of course. That's why Dan and Bess are always fighting. They're courting just like alligators. Really? Yeah. They must really like each other, not even know it. We're gonna have to help find out. I don't know, Nan. Trust me, I'll prove it to you. So Tommy comes to me with this idea about how to help me clean the chimneys. He figures we throw a chicken down there and it'll flap its wings and clear out all the soot. <laughs> that kid sure got his own way of seeing things. He certainly does. You know, if you keep sanding that wood down any further, you're going to be able to see right through it. <sighs> Sorry. You all right? Of course. I saw your sisters here earlier today. Is everything all right? This man, a friend of Lori's, he's asked Meg to court him. She's accepted. You don't like him? No, I, I don't really know him. I just think she may be getting herself into something she's not ready for. Well, if she's accepted his invitation, then I guess she's ready. Her husband, John, has only been gone a short while. Too soon for her to be thinking about courting. Well, who's to say what's too soon? I mean, just because she lost someone she loved don't mean she can't never love someone else. A woman shouldn't have to be alone the rest of her life, Joe. No one should. Well, we, sh we should finish the hall. Nick, it's getting pretty late. I'm tired. Do you mind if we finish it in the morning? Sure. You should have seen it. Edward was so taken with Meg, he barely even touched his tea. Honestly, Joe, I've never seen a man more smitten. Oh, that's wonderful. 
Laurie says he has the most beautiful house in Boston, with the biggest library he's ever seen. He has an autographed copy of Great Expectations. I never thought I'd meet anyone who loves Dickens as much as you do, Joe. He sent Meg another note. Another one? And she sent him one right back. <laughs> you did? It was just a simple note. She wrote him a love letter. It was beautiful. I see. So we've progressed to love letters, have we? That's perfectly acceptable to send letters, Joe. I thought you'd be happy for me. I am happy for you, Meg. If you want to send letters to Edward, I think that's great. You know, Joe, if you spent some time with Edward, you'd see he's a really lovely man. I'm sure he is. Perhaps we should all have dinner together sometime. I think that's a lovely idea, Amy. Even do it here at Plumfield. How about tomorrow night? Sure. Sure. So Bess likes Dan, huh? I don't believe it. Oh yeah, she really likes him. Why is she so mean to him then? No, just because she's uncomfortable. She doesn't know how to tell him that she likes him. She's scared if he finds out, he'll just tease her. You should hear the way she goes on and on about how big and strong he is. She likes him all right. Think you took the bait? Oh, yeah. Those two will be kissing in no time. Stand there all night, or are you gonna come over here and give me a hand? Well, it's really starting to take shape, isn't it? Yep. We keep working like this, we'll have it done in no time. Here. Why don't you hold these pieces in place while I put the roof on? Drive for a minute. All right, that ought to do it. So I was thinking about the ramp. Thought maybe we could put a handle on it, make it easier to open, and then for the windows, what I was thinking was Nick. Um, I appreciate all that you've done, but I think that I should take it from here. I mean, this, this is a gift from me to Rob. I just wouldn't feel right if I didn't do it myself. I mean, he is my son. Oh, it's still your gift, Joe. He doesn't even know I helped you with it. Well, I know that, but I would know. What's going on here? Nothing. I just think I should finish it myself, that's all. All right. Just like Bell Gardner's coming out party. Remember, Meg, when we were helping you get ready? Well, how can I forget? Joe left the curling iron on my hair too long and burnt it all off. This one would look fabulous on you. It's beautiful. It's silk. What do you think, Joe? I think it's a bit much. 
I don't know. Well, don't worry, Meg. There's plenty for you to choose from. I mean, I don't see why she has to get all dressed up anyway. I mean, this is just a dinner at Plumfield. I think Meg should just be herself. Joe, she has to make a good impression. After they're married, then she can go back to being plain old Meg. You know what I mean. Married? Amy, they haven't even had dinner yet. I don't know if I can go through with this. Come on, Meg. It'll be fun. It'll be just like the coming out party you never had. We'll dress you up. We'll do your hair. Maybe we could curl your hair and you could wear it down like you used to. You want her to wear her hair down? Why not? You wear yours down? I know, Amy, but I am not Meg. You know what I mean. Out. No, both of you. No, wait. Out. 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 Um, let me help you with that. Mm -hmm. No, that's okay. No, really. It's too heavy for you. Besides, I've carried stuff that weighs ten times more than this. Good for you. Well, come on, Bess. Just let me help you. No, I've got it. No, it's all right. I want to do it. Mm -hmm. back. Oh, my dress. Look what you did to my beautiful dress. Oh, what I did. You're the one who spilled it. If you hadn't grabbed it in the first place... I was then... just trying to help you. Well, next time, don't. Don't worry. I won't. Fine. Good. This is going to be harder than we thought. <sighs> yep. I think it's time for plan B. What's plan B? I'll think of something. <sighs> You get your fingers out of my cooking. I think your soup needs a little more salt. Would you mind getting your husband out of my kitchen? Laurie, go keep Edward company in the parlor. Oh, and you get out of here, too. Wow. You look great. Thank you. Amy. Can you help me with this bracelet, please? Sure. So, Nick, will you be joining us for dinner? Amy, I'm sure Nick has better things to do at this time. Yeah, I guess I do. Y'all have a nice evening. Well, as soon as Meg comes down, we can serve dinner. Going well? Yes, they are. I just have to finalize some paperwork and I'll be heading home next week. I'll be in Boston on Wednesday. Well, you should come by to the new office. It's right in the corner of our Meg. Anyway. Excuse me. Hey, you look. Uh, Oh, so sorry. <laughs> anyway, Joe played the Duke of Lancashire, fake beard and all. And Meg, she played the enchanting lady, Zara. <laughs> she gave the most delightful performance. So not only do you have a beautiful voice, but you're an actress, too. Oh, it was just something we did for fun. And Meg was such a professional. Right in the middle of her soliloquy, a mouse ran underneath her skirt. What did she scream? No. What a sound. 
I remember that. It was climbing right up my leg. <laughs> After she finished, that's when she screamed. <laughs> Growing up, it seems I spent more time at their home than I did at my own. Well, I can understand why. Ooh, I think he was just trying to get out of doing his studies. Now that, I find hard to believe. At Harvard, I seem to recall you being a model student. Well, he wasn't always so disciplined. He used to hide out at our house. But John always knew exactly where to find him. He used to say that you were the most unruly scholar he'd ever tutored. <laughs> well, I did give him a hard time. Well, I don't think he minded looking for you at our house. Gave him a perfect excuse to see Meg. Who's John? He was Meg's husband. <clears throat> what a beautiful home you have, Joe. Yes. It was Great Aunt March's. After she passed away, she left it to Joe. And Joe turned it into a school. And a very fine one, from what Meg tells me. Thank you. Well, Bess is doing very well here. And I hope that Demi and Daisy will attend Plumfield as soon as they're old enough, too. Those are your children. Oh, they're quite remarkable. Very bright. They certainly are. Just like their mother. Excuse me. done enough harm for one night. It's all right. I don't know what I was thinking. It's too soon. No, it isn't. You see what you've done? You just had to bring up John. We didn't mean to upset her. It's not your fault. I never should have accepted his invitation. I'm not ready for this. You are ready, Meg. That's not for you to decide, Amy. She's just nervous. Meg, it's not too late for you to enjoy the rest of the evening. I can't. I can't face him. Not now. Sleep either, huh? No. I just I, I thought I'd come down and get something to eat. Yeah, me too. Want a split of biscuit? No, thanks. It's all right. I don't mind. No, it's all right. Actually, I'm I'm not that hungry. After all, I I, I should probably go back up and get some rest. I've got a busy day tomorrow. Sure. Good night. Good night. Sam, can you take these plates, please? Why? Wait, you don't need my help, remember? And just take them. He told me just to leave you alone, so that's what I'm gonna do. What is wrong with him? What do you mean? He's been acting weird all week. Haven't you noticed? Oh, now that you mention it, I guess. What? I was looking through one of Dan's nature books. I found a poem. <laughs> Dan doesn't write poems. It's a real mushy one, too. Really? Let me see it. <clears throat> I watch her from a distance, keeping out of sight. I know my heart belongs to her, and this has been my fight. With hair like golden silk and the eyes the bluest blue, she is a graceful princess, and this I know is true. Who did he write this to? Come on, isn't it obvious? No. A graceful princess. 
He's not writing to me. You think Dan wrote it to me? Dan likes me? Remember, you're doing this for me. Louis Blue. Sure looks like you're good at it. Yeah. Oh, Dan, don't you just love horses? Their hair is so silky. And the way they move is just so graceful. <laughs> but you know what I love even more than horses, Dan? <sighs> Poetry. You have to be a very sensitive person to write poetry. Okay. Yeah, well, this is real interesting and all, but I've got a lot of work to do, so if you don't mind. All right. Excuse me for trying to have a polite conversation with somebody. Next time, I'm just going to talk to the horse. <sighs> Plan C? Did I do something to offend you? What? Last few days, you've been acting different. Like, you don't want me around anymore. No, that's not true. Is it because of what I said about Meg? No. Because if it is, I'm sorry. If she's not ready for a relationship, then who am I to say anything different? I'm sure she'll do whatever's best for her. Hello, Joe. Amy, it's late. What are you doing here? I've just come from seeing Meg. How is she? How do you think she is? She's upset. She's refusing to see Edward again. I didn't mean for this to happen. I only wanted what was best for Meg. This isn't about Meg. If you're feeling guilty because you're having feelings towards Nick, well... Don't take it out on Meg. What? That's ridiculous. No, it isn't. This is about you and Nick. And we both know that. <sighs> Nan, I don't think this is working. Well, maybe we gotta give him a bigger push. Like Walk them in a room together or something. And then they'll kill each other for sure. No, they won't. It'll be romantic. Once they realize that they're trapped, they'll have no one to turn to but each other. What are you two up to? Well, we're trying to figure out a way for Dan and Bess to kiss. Why? Because they like each other. Dan and Bess? <laughs> yeah, haven't you noticed? Those two are like oil and water. Bess can't even stand to be in the same room as Dan. Yeah, I know. See how much she likes them? That's the way nature works. If you like someone, you gotta push them away first. The more you like them, the more you push them away. Just like with the alligators. You sit there much long, I'm gonna make you pee or something. <sighs> yeah, I should probably get back to work. Joe going to town today? No, she's upstairs. She seem all right to you? Suppose so. She's been a little quiet this week. You and Joe are friends. She had something on her mind, she'd probably tell you, right? I'd like to think she would. 
She say anything about me? Like what, Nick? I don't know. Like, is she happy with me here? She, you know, things like that. She seems to be. She's real fond of you. Fond. <laughs> Come here and taste this stew for me. Mm-mm. It's good. <laughs> it's been simmering all day. It just needs to cook for a while. You know, stew is always better when you just give it some time. You been here long? No, no, I just got here. I'm glad you came. Yeah, me too. Listen, Dan, I know we haven't been very nice to each other this week. Um, this week? Okay, ever. But if you're willing to start over, then so am I. Oh, I guess I could do that. I was really glad to get your apology letter. It meant so much. What letter? There's no need to be shy. No. Bess. I never sent you any apology letter. Well, you sent me one, remember? No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Well, if you didn't send me a letter and I didn't send you a letter, then... <sighs> there you go. to return your necklace. Thank you for letting me borrow it. I see you put your hair back up. Yes, well, you were right. It just wasn't me. Well, I thought it looked nice that way. You should wear it down more often. Well, thanks again for the necklace. Meg. I owe you an apology. No, oh, Joey. It's all right. Her Meg, time. wait, please. I behaved terribly this week. I'm sorry. I haven't been a very good sister to you. You know, you have always been there for me, and the one time you needed me, I wasn't there for you. You can forgive me because I couldn't bear for you to be angry with me. Oh, Joe, I'm not angry with you. <laughs> love in my life with John. Some people live their whole lives and never know that kind of love. There's nothing that says you can't have that love again. Meg, if there is even the slightest possibility that you can find that love with Edward, then you should go after him. It's too late. He's leaving for Boston today. It's not too late. Amy! Hello! Amy! Joe! Meg! What's going on? Has Edward left yet? Uh, yes, he, he left about a half hour ago. See, Joe, I told you it was too late. I bet we can still catch him. 
You're going after Edward? Yes, are you coming? I thought I recognized that voice. Oh, sorry. I don't usually holler like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like the voice of an angel to me. I wasn't so sure. Isn't it nice to see Meg looking so happy? It certainly is. I'm just very glad to see you. It would be nice to see you looking that happy, too. Amy, you could have that, Joe, if you want it. I know Fritz would want you to find love again. He would hate the thought of you being alone. I don't know what the big deal about kissing is anyways. I know. I mean, even if Dan and Bess did kiss, they'd probably go back to fighting again. <laughs> the theory is if two people kiss, they're gonna fall in love, right? Yeah, that's what they say. That's just stupid. It's not like the kiss is magic or anything. I know, you're just squishing your lips together. What's so magic about that? Nothing. Have you ever kissed anyone before? Nope. Have you? Nope. Maybe we should try it. What? You know, like, test the theory. Like an experiment. All right. I think we're supposed to close our eyes first. Okay. Nothing. You? Nope. But there goes another theory. Nick? Joe, hey, listen. Just give me a second, I'll be out of here. You can have the whole place to yourself. No, actually, I, I was looking for you. I was hoping you could help me finish Rob's arc. I know that I told you earlier that I didn't need your help. But I'd still like to have it. If your offer still stands. My offer still stands. If you're sure that's what you want. I'm sure. All right. Well, the first thing you ought to do is file this door down. Yeah, you know, I couldn't get it to fit. Well, you can't force it. Gotta take your time with it. Just be patient. The whole thing will come together real nice. Yeah, just right along this edge here. You know what? 